If they actually just scheduled it an hour late accidentally, I'm gonna lose it. Oh my god, they actually did! Oh my god, we actually know what Formidable does. An hour late. The, the person who was scheduled the tweet actually just did it an hour late. I strike with my health instead of my power. Holy shit, guys, we were right. We did it. Oh my god. Okay, that was so crazy. We actually figured it out. That was one of our top two guesses. That was one of our top two guesses. That it actually strikes when you're attacking, I strike with my health. We went through the definition of formidable. We went through all the words they said about it. We knew it had to trigger on attack. We knew it had to synergize with attack and health somehow. We actually got there. All right, absolutely crazy. So formidable, I strike with my health instead of my power and it's not just on attack it's striking which is pretty crazy this is actually a really really crazy keyword so let's go ahead and look at today's reveals okay so petrocyte hound is a one mana zero two formidable so basically what's the implication of striking with health instead of power um well that means that you can't frostbite it effectively you can't use it with atrocity or something like that i guess and it means you want to buff their health right um you're, you're just like buffing their health buffing their health is going to be really really powerful right it works on block um it, it wouldn't be able to block fearsome can't block fearsome is a big one so fearsome would be a good counter to formidable i guess but looking at the new cards petrocyte hound is effectively a one mana two two asterisk uh because you can buff its health and it'll be like a 4-4 potentially if you give it like an elixir of iron there's a lot of things you can also culling strike to kill these no matter what yeah that's true stuff like that tom kench um tom kench would still take damage because it causes the ally to strike right all right next up we've got petrocyte broadwing which is a two mana zero three challenger formidable which is completely insane like that's nuts so Broadwing is basically a two mana three three challenger. Basically, it's obviously formidable. It strikes with its health instead of its power. So it's a little bit different. You can buff its health and it'll effectively get more attack. Striking with health instead of power is so good. Like this is, Petrocide Broadwing is insane, right? Unless there's some flaw that I'm, that I'm missing, right? The, a big problem with formidable is when it loses health it also effectively loses power so if broadwing takes two damage by like a mystic shot they're also reducing its attack which is interesting they get weaker after they attack after they get damage yeah exactly if you mystic shot it it'll turn into a one one so it's a two mana three three with a potential downside in some situations but you can also buff its health as a combat trick on both which is super interesting all right, then we've got Durand Protege, a three mana, three, two. When you play it, it grants an ally plus one health and tough. Now tough is interesting. It doesn't directly synergize with formidable, but it does give them like, it, it, it's an indirect synergy because it allows them to keep their health up, right? Like it doesn't help them strike harder on the first one. It doesn't add the tough to their striking power, but being able to keep the units alive is gonna be really, really good. Um, and it gives them one health on top of that. So if you play like a Broadwing on two and a Durand Protege on three, you're getting a nice buff. And then we can look at the last three cards here. Durand Sculptor, when you summon another ally, grants it one health. So it's kind of like a Battlesmith, um, but it only works on health, but it works on all units. It's a two mana, two, two. Just when you summon another ally, it just permanently gets one health. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it could work pretty well with a formidable uh, archetype. And then we've got Durand Architect. Give my supported ally plus two health and formidable this round. So now this is where the keyword gets really interesting. Because 
we finally know that we, we can just give formidable to other cards, right? We can give it to like Bubble Bear, for example, is like the big meme that I see you guys are saying. <laughs> I strike with my health this round. Finally, we have a reason to actually use Bubble Bear. This is the first time in the history of this game where main decking Bubble Bear actually could be a synergy point as a card, right? Like, I don't know if it'll be good, <laughs> But it'll at least be really, really funny. I mean, that's like an eight attack elusive, right? <laughs> like, that's the stupidest thing. All right. Then we've got Petrocyte Stag, the final card. A four mana, three, five support. I take all damage for my supported ally this round. And as a four mana, three, five, it has a pretty decent stat line. So when it attacks, your supported ally is just kind of like protected from its own attack. It's sort of like almost like a bad Chen. Shen does a similar thing. It's a four mana three five. When you attack, it gives it barrier. Um, this one, it's it's you know not pingable like barrier is, but it just takes the damage for free. So it, 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 it's kind of similar to Shen, but you know it, it, it's not really gonna level up. This lasts after combat. Yeah, true. It lasts until the end of the round. So basically the same thing as shed it's like a bad shen and a good callista combined <laughs> yeah what does that say about callista yeah no true true all right so this is this is actually kind of interesting so at, at the start of it we know that these are the galio cards because they're all made of petrocyte so galio will work with formidable in some way which is pretty interesting i think there's a lot of interesting implications in this formidable keyword so what are we thinking guys what are we thinking what can we do with this i mean obviously you want to give them health buffs right I think that there's a lot of interesting combos. Let we, we can get into the Durand Architect combos in a little bit, right? Braum would be good with Durand Architect. Yeah, Braum, Braum is good with Durand Architect. What else? Targon has health buffs. Yeah, there's a lot of cards like, for example, Astral Protection would be would be really, really good with these. Here, let's uh Astral Protection would be some, the kind of thing that would be good with these, right? Like health buffs. Targon, of course, has like Sun Blessed Vigor. Grant an ally plus two health. These kinds of cards are really, really good. Soraka. Soraka is, is really, really interesting. Soraka is a three meta one six. So she would be good when given that keyword and being able to give units maximum health and then heal them back up would actually matter. Now, Soraka is a card that was very obviously designed to work with Tom Kench. And these cards were like so designed to work with each other. Like there's been many times where people have like tried to use Tom Kench or Soraka outside of each other, and it's never really worked. There's like one or two cases where it's gotten kind of close, but it's never really worked, right? This might be, if we have enough Copium combined, this might be the first time it could make sense to run Soraka with this. Maybe. I mean, you are in Targon, you, you give a lot of the health buffs, right? And the permanent health buffs, you're healing your cards, and Soraka has a really high health stat line, right? So depending on how Galio and the other support cards tie this all together, I could actually see it. I could actually see it. All right. A lot of you guys are saying Battering Ram. I can't ignore Battering Ram. Battering Ram as a 6 mana 0 12. This is the unit that has Overwhelm and just has a dumb amount of health, right? So the combo is you use Durand Architect with Battering Ram. On turn 6, on turn 6, you play the Battering Ram. You attack with both. Durand Architect will give Battering Ram 2 health. So it'll have 14. And when you attack, it'll give itself 4 attack. Now, Formidable will mean that it won't strike with its attack, right? So it's not going to be 18 attack, but it'll be effectively, it'll strike with 14. It'll be basically a 14-14 for that attack because it'll have 14 health and it'll strike for 14 Overwhelm, right? which is pretty hilarious it's pretty hilarious you're you're gonna be in like demacia noxus so you're not really gonna have good ways of protecting it but like slamming effectively a 14 14 overwhelm on turn six is really funny <laughs> like that can't be frostbitten yes it literally can't be frostbitten either which is that's just great like that's pretty nuts yeah yeah that's 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 hilarious all right, so yeah, there's a lot of cute things we can do with Formidable. I actually, I, I like this archetype a lot. I mean, we talked about Bubble Bear. I'll pull it up here. Bubble Bear is 
a card that for a while has been my uh <laughs> my unofficial mascot because when bubble bear came out a lot of people said this just looks like swim IRL, which you know whatever you know he's, he's cute right sure i went with it <laughs> it's my spirit animal it's elusive it's a tune it's everything i look for in a card despite being completely useless but now for the first time ever for the first time ever there's a reason that bubble bear would make sense a very very long time ago i went on the record saying that bubble bear would be a cute card the moment we had a concept that like switches a card's attack and health right like sword and shield or like the crazed alchemist in hearthstone something that switches attack and health this will effectively do the same thing right bubble bear finally has a reason to make use of this high health stat line because it will effectively be an 8-8 eight, eight elusive attacking on that turn, right? And this will happen a lot earlier. This will happen a lot earlier than Battering Ram. This will happen on turn four, because you just play Durand Architect on three or Bubble Bear, and then the other one on four, and you're attacking with an 8-8 eight, eight elusive on turn four. That's not bad. Like, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. It dies if you switch the attack and health. Guys, obviously you would give it like plus one, plus one before switching them. Come on guys like <laughs> Anyway, these cards are actually pretty interesting. I'm uh, I'm curious what Galio is gonna add to these Um, they look pretty solid on their own. I mean again, we can't evaluate these cards without evaluating the full package Petrocyte Broadwing might be good enough to just be ran without Galio. It's kind of a conditional two mana three three challenger The fact that it does lose attack when it gets damaged is awkward but a two mana three three challenger is a pretty nuts unit if you know it, it isn't getting like mystic shot or something like that right like it's pretty crazy if you can like protect it from from stuff like that with like any amount of health buffs petrocyte broadwing can just fit into a deck without formidable synergy at all uh apart from just like i don't know a health buff like a troll chant or something right you're gonna need just like a little something um but yeah, they're not going to be able to block Fearsome. They're not going to be able to get Frostbitten. There's a lot of upsides and downsides to Formidable at the same time, right? Um, and it'll be interesting seeing it, how it, it interacts with all the other cards. Durand Protege looks solid if you're in the Formidable uh, archetype. Probably not going to see play outside of it. And I can say the same for Petrocyte Stag and Durand Sculptor. Uh, Sculptor isn't really going to make... I, I think all these cards aren't going to make sense outside of like Formidable Synergy, with the exception of maybe the Petrocyte Broadwing, maybe the 2-mana 3-3 three, three Challenger. But Durand Architect in particular is going to be really funny. What I'm, what I'm looking out for is if there's a spell that gives Formidable instead of just Durand Architect, that would be great. Because that would make stuff like Bubble Bear combos, stuff like Battering Ram combos, any of those high health combos with giving something formidable, that will make them all the more better, right? Like that will be nuts. So I'm 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 looking forward to to building around with this. This one's actually kind of cool, you know. I'm not gonna lie. Yesterday's reveals, you guys might have might have been able to tell, had me on a little tilt. The fake cards looked pretty good. Bandle City. You know, they've, they've been getting a lot of very cool cards. I'm, I'm glad Demacia is getting a cool different way to play. And there's a lot of interesting interactions that'll lead to potentially dumb combos here. You guys are mentioning a lot of cards like Ice Pillar. I'm seeing, yeah, a ton of people are saying Braum. <laughs> yeah, no, Braum, Braum is not bad. A, a, a really, really nice thing about Braum is like being in Freljord gives you access to stuff like Troll Chan and stuff like Elixir of Iron. That'll do a really, really good job of combining with your other formidable cards, right? Like Broadwing and stuff. So we're going to have to try to build the deck after we see what Galio does and how it all ties together. But overall, formidable is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, that's today's reveals. Tune in tomorrow to find out what Galio does. And if you're watching on YouTube, just remember, you can see these reveals live. If the devs feel like revealing everything on time tomorrow then at uh you know 9 a.m pacific we will get galio and his remaining supporting cards and i'll be live on twitch going over my reactions see you guys tomorrow for the galio reveal